Compound inequality is any, any inequality with an and or or statement. Um, when we're looking at this, an and situation is going to be where you have like negative 4 is less than x plus 2, which is less than or equal to 6, for instance. If you have an or situation, you would have negative 4 is less than x plus 3, or x plus 2 is greater than 7. So you have two separate inequalities here, where in this one it's one big inequality. Now let's talk about how to solve these. Write and graph the inequality. And number D is more than zero. So it has to be bigger than 0, but it's less than 10. So I have a situation here where 10 is my highest number and 0 is my lowest number. D is somewhere in the middle there, between there. So write a compound inequality for the graph below. With our compound inequalities, we have a couple different situations. When we have opposite directions here, this is going to be an OR situation. So we'll write this up here. OR graph. Opposite direction. An AND graph is going to have just a middle ground. So for instance, on this situation where we had to graph this, our numbers here would be 0 and 10. I don't have an equal to, so I have an open circle to an open circle. So now on 2, if I have an OR situation, my variable has to be less than or equal to 4. or it has to be greater than 6. Okay. So notice again, the AND situation, it's all one. You only have one line. In an OR situation, they're opposite directions, and we have two separate inequalities. So now let's talk about solving and graphing these. So if you notice here on our sheet, this left side, these are all AND situations, and the right side is all OR. So I'm going to work through this straight down. I'm going to do all of the AND ones first, and then we'll go to all of the OR questions. So when you're solving an AND situation, you can split this into two separate ones, or you can leave it as one big inequality. That's up to you. I personally think it's a little bit easier just to leave it as one inequality, and we just have to solve. So if I'm looking at this, I subtract the 4, Now this is where it gets a little goofy. You actually have multiple sides. We have 1, 2, and 3. So I'm subtracting 4 from the very right and from the very left. That now gives me 1 is less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to 6. I'm going to graph my inequality. I have 1 and 6. Oh, this one doesn't actually have a line underneath. My bad. So I have a closed circle at the 1, an open circle at the 6, and I connect. Now, next one, same concept. I'm going to add my 5, just like I normally would in any other inequality. I 
to get rid of that 2 that's associated with my k, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. I'm dividing by a positive number, so I don't have to flip my sign. So 1 is less than k, which is less than 6. Ironically, it happens to be very similar there. However, two open circles. First, I have to distribute that half. So I have negative 12 is less than 2a plus 8, which is less than 18. Okay, now it's just like these up here. I subtract the 8 from both the left and the right of the inequality. This gives me negative 20, which is less than 2a, which is less than 10. I divide by a positive 2. And I now have negative 10, which is less than 5. two open circles, and I connect in the middle. And inequalities are probably the most straightforward. The OR can be tricky, but if you know it's an OR situation, you have two separate inequalities, so you just solve them both individually. So on this left one, so I'm just going to solve the left one, and then I'll solve the right one. I'll subtract my 3. Now I do my right side there. I add the 8. And x is greater than 7. So now looking at my number line here, this is an OR situation, so my arrows are going to go in the opposite direction. I'm at negative 2 and at 7. At the negative 2, I have a closed circle and it needs to go to the left. At the 7, I have an open circle, and it needs to go to the right. Next problem. Again, I'm just going to split this down the middle here. Solve both inequalities. Minus the 1. Divide by that 2. Now on the right side, I have to subtract the 3. Now this one gets a little bit goofy. Remember that negative stays with it. Now I'm dividing. And this makes sense because on the left side, we had x had to be less than a number. And on the right side, it was already less than, but because we divided by that negative here, it switched, so now we have a greater than. So I have a number at negative 4, and at 2, I have an open circle at the negative 4, it goes to the left, I have a closed circle at the 2, and it goes to here bigger because of distribution but really not that much different um, so we're going to distribute I'll minus the 14 and I need to divide by that negative 7 Again, I'm dividing by a negative number, which is going to flip my sign. On the right side, same concept. Distribute. You can always use a calculator to do that distribution. I'll add the 4.
divide by the 5. Once again, I have my numbers. W is supposed to be less than that negative 3. It's an open circle to the left. And W is supposed to be greater than 5 to the right. So as long as you know an and situation that your graph is going to be right in the middle, pretty straightforward. With an or situation, your graph needs to be going opposite direction. And you can always double check to make sure, did you flip your sign correctly looking at your um, inequalities? Do you have a less than for an x? Do you have a greater than for x? So just a little bit of a difference there. Um, but otherwise, this is all our solving inequalities just like we had before.